I'm going to take an opportunity. I'm going to show you something. Um, uh, electric heat has been uh, the topic of late. So um, I've done several electric heat videos on uh, voltage and uh, wiring up the low voltage part of it and you know so on. So uh, today I'm going to do one a little bit different uh, before we start doing some gas videos. Uh, I've got an air handler that is basically old and decrepit. Uh, much like, well, not decrepit as in uh, doesn't work or anything, it just needs to be rewired, and I mean completely. So uh, the heater is not wired up, the low voltage looks terrible. Um, you may see this if you come across an electric furnace or something where the high voltage wires have been burnt off. So I'm going to use this and take an opportunity to show you how easy it is to rewire or replace the wiring uh, on an electric heater. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So uh, let me go show you the, the unit that we're going to be working on. I'll explain it and then we'll jump right into it. All right, there she is. Just a plain old two-ton air handler. If we take the cover off though, oh man. Uh, whoever had this last, uh, the heater kit's not there. I've got high voltage power to the unit. Uh, we've got some uh, a bunch of wire nuts and everything in here connecting wires. Um, the whoever ran the G circuit to the actual relay, they just used a piece of thermostat wire and clipped the ends uh, with a with a brand new terminal, which was completely oversized. So uh, I've got some spare low voltage wire parts that we pulled off of an old unit. Uh, I'm not a pack rat, but uh, I do try to keep things that look like factory wiring. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'll show you uh, the process, so or at least what I would do. So I, I do have some uh, replacement wires that I pulled, like I said, off of uh, junk units. Uh, we've got uh, some white wires, some red wires. I'm actually going to use the ground wire. Uh, it's The gauge is appropriate, but it's, it's green with a yellow stripe. I hope that'll be fine for the green circuit. And I've got a couple darker color blue wires. That used to be for the contactor that are now going to be for my common side. So I've got a, a blue for a common. Um, like I said running yellow for power. Uh, There's nothing wrong with it, but we're going to kind of dress this up and, and go with it. So this is basically going to be a, a total rewire job, uh, and we're going to do it right. So uh, I've got a PSC motor that's got a Molex plug on it. So we're going to have to uh, attach that motor to the heater kit uh, and everything. So uh, let me show you the heater kit and... Uh, Let's have fun. All right, here's my heater kit. Um, what I've got, this is a simple uh, 10K heat kit. Um, if I flip it over, you can see that I've got two electric heaters. I've got one double stack high limit uh, safety control. So uh, this is fairly common. Uh, it's not on every unit, but of course uh, the, the limit should be uh, in some shape or form. So I've got a, a bottom set of contacts and a top set of contacts. Um, and I've got a, a uh, sequencer here um, that is rated for 10 kW. So you can see that I've got a top set of contacts here. That's the first switch to close. And then I've got my middle switch here, 24 volts down to the bottom. So uh, I was going to start talking about some uh, electric heat staging and such, but uh, not going to do it on this one. So um, we're just going to rewire everything. A lot of guys, for some reason, okay, you, you don't... Uh, like we, we make things harder than it has to be. So um, hopefully this will show you how easy it is. So the orientation of this, uh, you can see here, I've got an airflow arrow, everything's gonna be up. We're gonna insert this into that, uh, that hole in the air, uh, the air handler. So uh, let me go ahead, I've got some wires here that we're gonna use and uh, we're going to uh, wire this thing up from scratch. So the way this is, okay, if you, if you look at how it's uh, situated, this whole heater, one heater, is right here. So this is the beginning and this is the end of the heater. Or if you're backwards, you can say this is the beginning and this is the end. So we've got one whole heater right here, the in and the out connections, and the same thing here, one heater there, okay? Uh, sequencer, it's a uh, two switch sequencer. So we're gonna go ahead and run both of them off of this sequencer, all right? This top switch has, uh, unlike the middle or the second switch, it has two male, uh, holes on it that uh, that we're going to use. One's going to be for the heater and one's going to be for our fan. So we're going to use one side of this on the outlet of the switch, right? So L1 is going to come in here 
and when we come out through the switch we're going to go to the safety into the heater and the other side is going to piggyback over to our fan relay and attach to the normally closed switch on that relay so uh let's let's wire it up real quick all right so hopefully this comes out right so i'm going to use a red set of wires and a yellow set of wires and try to keep each circuit kind of uh, separate black is going to be my return path back so uh, we're going to assume that l1 already attaches here okay so I'm just going to say L1 is going to bring this in, okay? We would this L1 power would come from the terminal block, okay? So we're, we'll change this later, but just to get the get the idea now. So L1 is going to come into the sequencer, all right? From that sequencer, right? Once we go through the switch and we make a call for heat, we're going to have a wire leaving and going into our safety. If the high limit is closed, which it normally is, it only opens when we uh, exceed the temperature limit, which on this one is 165. Uh, but from that limit, okay, we would wire up. Actually, I should turn it the other way. We're going to go into a heater. So L1 passes through the sequencer. From power, we go across our control switch, our operating switch in series with a safety to the heater and I can take uh, I'm going to use black from my other side right and I would take this black wire all the way back to the L2 side of that terminal block so if you remember we had L1 coming in and I had L2 going back okay so that would be honestly the high voltage side of this uh, of one of these heater elements okay so I'm going to leave that and I'm going to do the, uh, the yellow one, okay? So on this second switch, I would have power leaving the second switch. I'm going to run this, uh, like I said, in yellow. We'll be leaving the second. Going into that bottom contact or that bottom uh, switch on the uh, double stack high limit. When I leave that side of the switch I would come into my other heater and it would go through the element and then I'm going to use this black wire right and that would be my L2 okay now of course we would need to uh, bring in L1 into the second switch okay so each switch power coming in would be the L1 uh, we're going to wire that up uh, from the terminal block out in the, on the air handler but as far as the high voltage setup on a 10K strip, it's really not hard. If this was a 15K and I would have a third switch uh, on this sequencer, or if I had a second sequencer, then we would simply do the same thing. On the outlet side of that switch, we would go into a safety potentially, uh, into the heater, and then back out. Okay, so the safety is in series. You can have one or two. There are some units that have a fusible link, uh, and I'll show you that, and we'll talk about it real quick. Okay, so here we go. We've got a couple different options. Uh, I've got a couple heat kits pulled out. Uh, here's one. Uh, the easiest way to look at these, uh, because you'll see ceramic uh, pieces through the metal. Um, uh, you may or may not see a second safety switch. So what's, what's everything, uh, what's it all look like? So take, it, take the kit out. Take it out of the box or take it out of the unit, right? It's only a couple screws. Um, we can see that this used to be a fusible link. Uh, fusible links are usually rated at a higher temperature. Uh, if you've got airflow, air, airflow, if you've got airflow problems, then that link is a one-time deal. Uh, it will, it'll open and, and it'll it'll uh, break the circuit. So, uh, real simple. This one happens to look like a piece of uh, pencil lead or so. Uh, not much to it. Okay. This other safety that we have, uh, and there was meant to be two here there the third heater has been removed but that is a high limit um, uh, automatic reset it's usually at a lower temperature maybe 140 160 170 the fusible links that I've seen they're somewhere around the 200 degree range so but wiring them are no different if everything is a high voltage safety then once we come out of the sequencer on the load side of the switch so L1 powers coming in and once it passes the switch on a call for heat, 
then we're going to go into the fusible link. When we come out of the fusible link, we would go into a high limit safety. And then out of the high limit safety, we would go into the element, out of the element, back to L2, back to the terminal block. And we would repeat that process for every heater that you're trying to work. Okay, choose the appropriate switch on the sequencer. Um, this one actually has two of those DC relays, so it's pretty much one relay a piece. Uh, from the terminal block, we would go L1 into our uh, relay. When the relay gets a call for heat, it's going to close those contacts, so it would come out. It would go into uh, the fusible link, out of the fusible link, into the limit, out of the limit, into the heater, out of the heater, and then back to the other side uh, of power at your other terminal or your different side of your terminal block. Um, you can put both safeties on one side of the of the element as far as the circuitry, or you could actually have power going into the fusible link, then the heater, and when it comes out the heater, it goes through the limit. So there's, as long as the safeties are in series, you really don't have a problem. You can wire it almost, you know, however you want. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. So um, the one thing that I would tell you, uh, bring up a little bit of staging real quick. Hey, here's a look at that heater kit um, with the actual low voltage put on it. Um, if you look, we've only got two wires, low voltage coming in from, you know, from the unit, from the, from the thermostat and so on. So this would, even though we have two heat strips in this particular kit and we have two uh, DC relays, there's only one stage, okay? Uh, when I get 24 volts on this white wire, it's gonna actually hit here and you can see that they, they piggyback off of that one and immediately go to the second one. So even though uh, if, if you guys are out there thinking about staging, uh, one stage of heat, two stages of heat, three stages of heat, uh, these, the way this is set up is this, is this acts as one stage of heat. So if you've already got a heat pump, then your heat pump is your first stage of heat. When you energize your auxiliary, it's gonna, it's gonna hit this first relay and automatically hit the second. So you're gonna turn on both of these, which is in turn going, should turn on both of your heaters. Uh, and the same thing goes with this uh, sequencer set up here. You can see that it's got a bar that is soldered on each side of the 24 volt connections. So if I were to put power on one, it's essentially putting power on the other one. Uh, if you ever wanted to stop all your heaters from staging in every time you had a call, uh, you could take and actually take the staging out. You could cut that little bar on each side or on one side. You could have your hot, your W circuit going in here. You can leave the commons connected and have one blue wire going back or what. But you could take out that, uh, that bar between them and you could actually only turn on one heater with this sequencer and then if you needed an additional stage of heat you could have a second w circuit or a third w circuit or a fourth or a fifth or whatever you wanted and actually turn that individual heater on as well so uh, you get into some thermostat configurations and some uh, some different wiring but uh, when they're connected like that either through the bar or through the uh, um, the double wire in one terminal end uh, from the factory, uh, they're essentially acting as one. The timing and everything is already dictated by the manufacturer. So if you want to stop that, cut that bar out or cut the wire in and actually uh, add another circuit from your thermostat. So anyway, let's go and uh, we're going to go and wire these units up. Uh, I've got the heater kit already wired. You saw that. We're going to go fix that air handler and then we'll test it and make sure. All right, before I put this thing in, uh, the one thing that I didn't do yet is uh, install the wire from the leading heat strip, the first heat strip to come on. Uh, I didn't install the wire that goes from the outlet, the load side of that switch, into the normally closed for the fan. So I'm going to copy a, another brand out there, even though this is not that particular one. I'm going to use a purple wire. I got it out of, a, a like I said, a junk unit. So uh, I'm going to put that on in a minute. But before I install this, I'm going to go ahead and turn my meter to continuity. And I'm going to ohm out each circuit. Okay, so I'm going to put one lead here. And this is going to check the high limit all the way through the heater. And I'm going to check the L2 side. I got a beep and it says 11 ohms. 
So switches don't have any resistance or they shouldn't. So from here, which is the beginning of the heater all the way to here, the end, uh, the only resistance I should have is a very little bit for the wire and none for the switch, really. You know, like this minimal stuff, right? So that 11 ohms is pretty typical of a heater. I'm going to choose this one here, the second one, and hit the other side of it. And it beeps. I get 11 ohms as well. So I'm confident in the, the safety uh, and everything. Of course, once we wire this in, we will go ahead and uh, check the amp draw. So here's my purple wire. This is going to be on the top switch of the sequencer, and we're going to attach it to our fan relay. All right, so it's in place. And uh, while I'm here, I'm also, I'm also going to go ahead and attach my low voltage to the unit or to the sequencer. So here is my W circuit going into the bottom of that sequencer on one side. And here is a wire we're going to use for common. It's going to be a uh, darker blue one. It's going to be on the other side at the base of that sequencer. So I've got my low voltage, 24 volts. Uh, this is going to be a single stage of heat, even though there's two elements. This one sequencer is activated and it, and it times everybody in. Uh, so let's go ahead. We're going to install it and finish wiring everything up and fix the other low voltage that we got. All right, we got everything moved out of the way. We had to move the terminal block out of the way so it would slide in uh, in this small space here. So uh, the low voltage wiring and the fan stuff's out the way. I, I've removed the fan relay, so we're just going to slide the heater kit in and go ahead and put everything back. We got plenty of room for our low voltage. We'll trim that up and uh, when we install. Of course, I forgot my quarter inch stubby nut driver or my yeah my stubby nut driver at home so we'll just we'll do it with the old ratchet all right so the fan relays in we've got our 24 volt connections over here and we've got our one two and three switch that we're going to use at the top so uh, anyway we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and start uh, connecting everything up go ahead and get it out the way. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put my low voltage on this fan relay so we can see it. I'm going to put the green in the uh, on the back side 24 coil connection so it's hanging out here and I'm going to go ahead and use this uh, dark blue wire as my common just like I did for the uh, for the heat sequencer. 
and that way we've got it uh, as well. All right. So uh, we've got our 24 volts for our sequencer and our 24 volts for our fan relay. And now we're just going to wire up the uh, we're going to wire up the high voltage uh, for the heater and the fan, and then we're going to go and do the low voltage, and we'll turn it on. And see how it is. All right. So here we go. We're going to um, I'm going to take this red wire since I used red for the first heater and the fan. I'm going to take this red wire and attach to that top heater switch. So this is power from L1 going in, okay? So I've got my L1 connection here and I'm going into the sequencer. When the switch closes on a call for heat, it passes out and it's going to go to the first heater, which is the red circuit heater and the fan, which is this purple, that's going to send power through the normal close. I'm going to do this again with the yellow wire for the second heater because we want to, we want to run its own wire and not just jump off of the L1 provided to the first switch. Because if we do that, then this wire here is responsible for powering both heaters. So it's got to be a high, a low enough gauge or a thick enough wire to power both. So I'm going to run two separate circuits, just like I did off the sequencer, a red and a yellow. Okay. So. Okay. So now we've got L1 powered to both our heaters, the red to the first heater, the yellow to the second heater. Uh, I'm going to finish by attaching the end of those heaters, which is the black wire, right, that we ran. The first one, I'm going to hold this one out the way, the first one is going to tap into the opposite side terminal block. So that circuit is complete. And then the second one, the yellow one, is going to also tap into that circuit block. So I'll show you around here what that is. So I've got uh, heater one starting out going to the sequencer and heater two starting out going to the sequencer and they both end up over here on this side okay so as far as our heater other than the low voltage connections that we'll connect in a minute the, they're done uh, what i need to do is take this purple wire which is coming off the first heater and the load side of that heat sequencer switch this is a backup circuit to power the indoor fan when the heater comes on. So I'm going to attach that to the normally closed on the fan relay. If it's a circuit board or a fan board, it needs to go to the normally closed switch and common is going to be power out of that relay to the fan motor itself. All right, so look, we got some short stubs. Um, there is a plug that this blower motor attaches to underneath this top panel. Okay, so it just plug, it kind of plugs in underneath. Let's take you down there real quick, right? It it plugs in up underneath here. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna have to uh, redo some of these connections. So where it plugs in, all right, this black wire. Oh, All right, so this black wire doesn't reach the relay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach a butt connector to it. Like I said, this is an old air handler. Uh, we're going through wire in practice, really. So I'm going to attach this uh, butt connector to it and crimp it down. And that way we're not dealing with uh, oversized wire nuts and stuff. So this, the speed that goes down to that plug is is going to the motor so it has to come from the relay so this is going to be our connection if you've got a fan board you're going to have a common connection or these old brown relays is going to be the number one connection okay so we're going to bring power once again from this l1 i started l1 power over here on this side of the terminal block so once i ran the first circuit that's what dictates in my mind that it always is l1 it's one side of power so i start here and I'm going to go into the relay. Uh, when the switch closes, it's going to go out of the relay into the blower and return back to this other side. So we're going to start at L1 here. And go into the number three terminal on the relay. When the switch closes, it'll go out the number one. 
loop around into the high speed for the fan, so on and so forth. Now this unit, yellow, is the other side of power. So you can see what somebody did here. They ran a heavy gauge heater wire. I mean, this is like a 10 gauge wire or a 12 gauge wire. Um, yeah, 12 gauge. So they ran that instead of running it for the heater and that's why this unit was all butchered up. So I'm gonna take this uh, orange wire nut off of this mess and uh, I'm gonna fix that real quick as well. And I'm gonna put this, uh, this butt connector on this one as well. And crimp it so it's a little smoother looking without wire nuts everywhere. And I wish I had better lights, but I don't, so bear with me. But yeah, so that yellow wire is going to terminate over here on this uh, back side of the terminal block. All right. I could run a little slack out of that. There we go. I'll take some slack out of that and pick it up. The last high voltage load we need to look at is going to be our transformer. So here we've got a multi-tap transformer. It's got uh, red, black, orange, and white. You can see that uh, all these uh, wires are left exposed. The only thing I've got anything on is red. So the red wire and the white wire are going to be part of the 208 circuit that we're going to use. So we're going to have to cap off these other two. Let me grab a couple caps. We'll do that and wire that high voltage up and then we'll pretty much uh, we'll pretty much be set. We're going to use the white and the red so we're going to cap this uh, orange and black and I try not to put wire nuts on it. They make these clear caps that are much like the terminal ends. I mean they come in the terminal end box but uh, you just crimp them on the end. So uh, I'm going to crimp the orange and the black individually. You don't put them together on the transformer. And what we're going to do, since the transformer can't reach the terminal block, I'm going to add, guess what, another butt connector. Uh, same color wire, white to white, uh, roughly the same gauge. All right, and we're going to uh, extend this transformer wire out so that we can plug it into the terminal block and it have its own circuit. All right, so I've got the white wire attached and uh, the black wire or the uh, red wire here, okay? Uh, the connections like that, I mean, they're loose, they look junky. Um, I'd cut them and start them again, okay? So I'm going to strip these back um, and basically uh, I'm going to reuse the same one, but I'm going to use the butt connector in it. So this is the only use that I personally like for the butt connector. Is uh, old, old units. I don't like to put them on fan motors necessarily. I have, but I don't like to, but personal opinion. So, And then this thing is going to stretch all the way back. So I've got my got my red wire, okay, and I'm going to crimp it inside. Right. So now, if we were to neatly run these behind, right, for the transformer. And then behind it says that red is your 208 so I'm going to put red on my L1 and I'm going to put the white in this case which is the other side of power it says common but it's the other side of power that's what it that's what it really means right for us as uh, heat and air guys the other side of power I'm gonna put that back there on the uh, the other terminal so we pretty much got our terminal block loaded up we have wired up uh, we have the unused terminals on the transformer capped. We've got the red and the white extended back to the terminal block. We've got the fan power going into the relay. 
the other side of power for the fan, the yellow wire, is back to the terminal block. We have two heaters. Each one of them start on one side of the terminal block and on the other one. So uh, we're pretty much squared away with the high voltage. Now we got to get the low voltage. And I'm just going to pull this through so we can look at it, right? Now this unit is a heat pump, so uh, I'm not going to go into the whole sequence with a heat pump or anything. Um, so we've got uh, 24 volt wires coming off the transformer. We've got uh, blue uh, as a factory color and yellow. All right, so it's going to a 5 amp fuse. Uh, what I am going to do is uh, I'm going to replace that yellow wire on this fuse, which they've ran in a uh, 10 gauge terminal. I'm just going to, uh, well, as a matter of fact, since we're going to do it, we're going to do it right. We're going to take, uh, we're going to take that, that heavy gauge or that uh, large terminal off, and we're going to put in the appropriate one. I cut my wire just a little bit long, but uh, you, can, you can make a homemade fuse holder. Uh, just make sure that you tape up and create a little bit of insulation between these two. That way, uh, the fuse actually is in series with the circuit. But uh, now we've got a red wire going to our other red wires. Maybe that'll make you feel better, okay? So I'm going to route the, uh, we're going to connect our commons up here. Um, I don't like that thermostat wire. All right. So I'm going to take the common from the heat sequencer. We're going to pull it behind everything. We're going to stick that blue wire through and we'll attach it to the transformer common. All right. We're going to have this uh, fan relay common. We're going to run it through and uh, through the through that little grommet. We've got our green. We're going to run that through. We've got a white. Okay, that we're going to uh, run through as well. Uh, we're going to clean up this uh, low voltage stuff. Uh, get rid of all these. Uh, different wire nuts that are not uh, similar so here we go let's uh, get the white connections out as I was saying this is a heat pump unit so we're gonna have some auxiliary heat connections uh, we've got this green wire for the fan so we don't we don't need that common all right we've got our red for the fuse all right so if we trim all this up all right my common connections if I evenly if I kind of hang those evenly uh, we'll take them about right there and I will skin these back doesn't matter which one's which they're, they're both common right the fan connection should be about the same uh, and it is we have a little bit of slack in it so I got the green the white is there um, all right. Boy, sometimes it's easier just to start over. All right. So I'm going to trim up some of this stuff. All right. So we're going to make our connections to our power. So I've got my fuse here. We know that that's off of the red circuit. And uh, we're going to go ahead and strip this back. All right. And we're going to wire this fuse in with the two red wires that are thermostat wires. One going to the outdoor unit to the heat pump. And one is going to go to our uh, thermostat, of course. All right. So we got those and our red wire and I put a little bit of a twist on it so it kind of holds them together we got that one there um, for the fan we've got our green wire 
right? And it was attached to this brown. So I'm assuming somebody that did something before, there might be a break in the wire. So I'm going to reattach to the same one they had. And I'm going to use that brown. All right. So that brown wire is going to go to uh, the green for our fan relay in this case. And that's going to be our fan. So we got that out the way. All right. The white wires, man, just all kind of crazy links and everything. So let's even them out, try to make them neat as much as possible. Uh, that's going to go to our white wire here. Could have been a little bit longer, but I hope y'all guys get the idea about this, right? So that wire there, the yellow wire. So even though we didn't mess with that, what I'm going to do is... trim that out the way anyway okay just trying to neaten it up all right and we have our orange wire for our reversing valve and you can see so like I said we're gonna pull that even take that out the way all right and now we've got all these commons to deal with so I'm going to take uh, the two commons that we have that we put in today just kind of twist them together real quick to keep them side by side that's going to go to that to that blue wire from the uh, transformer that's uh, factory done All right. and then I've got a common wire from the thermostat and uh, the outdoor unit as well so it gets a little tight in here matter of fact let me rerun this so the fuse ain't in the way so we'll We'll run these here. Just a little bit. to make sure they're even links and put them in the uh, appropriate size wire nut little twist on everybody just to make them whole and uh, my white wire can be a little bit longer but uh, all in all it's okay all right so we're going to uh, Got a common reversing valve, our contactor coil, our heat sequencer, our fan, and power. Uh, these other wires, I'm not going to cut them off close. I'm just going to tuck them out the way. So uh, let me uh, let me find out uh, where the breaker is, and we're going to turn everything on and make sure she works right. All right. So the guy doing the video is an idiot. He uh, wired up the wrong legs of that multi-tap transformer. I chose the wrong high voltage connection. So uh, I put in a new transformer because I smoked it real quick. And uh, I am just finishing up reattaching the low voltage connections. And I'm going to plug in the high voltage connections. And uh, we should be able to run this unit. Before I used the red and white because I looked at a transformer that looked very similar to the one that I was using and it was actually uh, once I smoked that thing and pulled it out it was supposed to be in the red and black terminal so I basically attached to the winding wrong and uh, 
this one has the red and the black. I read the label carefully, okay? So now, we should be good. Turn the fan on. Fan comes on, we're pulling power through the normally open switch out the common on this brown relay. So we're pulling about uh, 1.3 amps. I hope you can see that. There we go, good enough. Uh, the heat strips are not pulling anything. So zero amps on the heater. So I'm gonna flip this. This is a heat pump. I'm not gonna go into compressors or anything. I'm gonna turn it to emergency heat and we're gonna turn on um, one heat strip. I did unplug uh, one of the two heat strips because we only have a 30 amp breaker on this and one heat strip is 20 plus the fan, you know, another couple amps. So I don't want to overload the circuit, but you could, uh, you know, if you had a 60 amp circuit uh, or a 90, depending on the size unit, it'd be fine. So uh, we're going to turn on this first heater and we'll put it in emergency heat and uh, we'll watch it work. All right, we had to wait on a time delay. I left the blower fan on. So uh, in just a second, the heat sequencer should get 24 volts and we should see that we have about, uh, you know, 19, 20 amps on the heater. There it goes. 19, drop down to about 18 amps, depending on where exactly you're at with your, uh, the center of your amp clamp. So 17 amps on that heater. Uh, we run a 208 system here. Uh, total amp draw is going to be about 18 and a half uh, by the time you count the fan. So uh, everything works fine. I hope that you learned a little bit about uh, rewiring electric heat uh, on a heat pump or an electric furnace. It's not as hard as it looks. It's really quite simple. So uh, until next time, that's it.